statistics from the World Health Organization indicate that one in four Kenyans is suffering from a form of mental illness. I lived in the States for some time. Um, and one thing they don't really prepare you for uh, as an equator dwelling person is how geographical relocation can really mess around with your mind. Felicia Mboro, a resident of Kariobangi in Nairobi, was diagnosed with depression while pursuing her studies in the United States in 2013. It was largely triggered by the weather. The difference between living in the equator, enjoying the sun, and then moving to a different country without people you know, without exposure to the sun, and with my biological disposition to have a psychosocial condition, it was inevitable that I was going to have my first episode while I was a student. Her life would take a different turn. She became isolated from family and friends and struggled to pay attention in her studies. It took me about a month uh, before you know, I realized something is wrong, but I just don't know what is wrong. I was permanently tired. These events prompted Felicia to seek treatment. She says, compared to Kenya, mental health has been given priority in the United States. It only took a week of treatment and I was okay. Kenya is complicated. I don't want to talk badly about yeah. my country, <laughs> but one, I would have never been diagnosed, and even if I was diagnosed, I'd have been thrown into a mental health facility. You cannot handle mental health from an institutional point of view. It actually has to be community-based. It has to be work done down completely at home. These are some of the standards Kenya hopes to attain in a bill sponsored by nominated Senator Sylvia Kasanga, aimed at amending the country's mental health laws. The Nyumbakumi there works better. In the bill, those suffering from mental illness will be involved in decision-making regarding their treatment, contrary to the previous situation. Most of the time, when you're presented to the doctor, it's when you're in a full crisis mode. So treatment is determined based on that. We're looking at every institution for mental health, from level one, level two, level three, mm -hmm. is serviced with mental health practitioners, medication. NHIF will now cover mental health you know, issues. At the same time, mental health treatment will going forward receive an independent budget allocation in each financial year. Senator Kasanga says that currently 1.2 billion shillings have been set aside for the construction of a special psychiatric hospital in the country. The board has a budget line which they've not been able to access, about 100 million shillings. But now they will be able to access that money, be able now to sit as a board, be able now to pass all the policies that they have been creating and preparing as they wait for the bill to come. However, there are challenges currently straining administration of mental health care to patients. We don't have enough practitioners. If you look at the gap of the number of psychiatrists that we have vis-a-vis -vis our population, mm -hmm. first big gap. The number of, say, nurses who are trained on mental health, mm -hmm. big gap. Psychologists, big gap. Mm -hmm. Kenyans need to be aware that there's an opportunity here within mental health, that you can take a career within mental health at different levels of practice, and we need more and more of those. According to the World Health Organization, mental health should get 4 to 6% of the funding allocation to a nation's health sector. Every sector in governments, and both national and county, has to look into mental health one way or another. The realization of ambitions enlisted in the Mental Health Amendment Bill 2020 largely depend on those diagnosed with mental health conditions seeking medical assistance. The Ministry of Health says five out of six individuals diagnosed with mental health conditions do not seek medical assistance. Ben Kerera, K24, Nairobi.